Korea and Japan. I've got the great pleasure and honor to welcome all of you, dear colleagues from all over the world, to the first Juvaluk and Lenisna International Academy, Julia 2022. I would like to thank you, BeautyEurope.eu, the European distributor of Lanisna and Chuvaluk, for creating an idea and being an initiator of this academy. I would like to give many thanks to Vaim Global Company for creating those incredible products based on polydialectic acid, Lanisna and Chuvaluk, and for perfect organization of the great academy. Without your knowledge and experience, it would be impossible to meet so many noble guests today. Before we will go to the first topic, I would like to remind you, dear colleagues, that you can ask questions during the webinar by clicking the question and answers button at the bottom. After each lecture, I will choose some questions and read them. The speakers will answer them after each session. Thank you very much once again. Now, I've got a great pleasure to present Dr. Hosun Che from Korea. He's a key doctor for many aesthetic products. He has had a lot of workshops and webinars for Juvaluk and Lenisna, not only in Korea, but also in Asian countries. He teaches beginners doctors to try Juvaluk and Lenisna with easier procedure techniques. Dr. Che will talk about the latest aesthetic market trends because he's sensitive to the market trends. He works in Gangam area of Korea, which is the most competitive aesthetic place in the world and he has many relationships with international doctors. He will introduce polydialectic acid, Juvaluk and Lenisna, and we will look at how to manage when we have some nodules after procedures. Dr. Che, the floor is yours. Thank you, Dr. Bar Bartek. Uh, hello, good morning or good evening. <laughs> Uh, I'm Dr. Ho Song Choi from South Korea. It's really nice to meet you online. Um, uh, and I would like to thank uh, Vime Global for inviting me as a speaker to this great event. Today, uh, I'm going to talk about um, overall uh, clinical use of Juveluk uh, and Lenisna and how to manage complications too. Uh, first, I will share my slide. Okay, can you see my slide? Yes, Good. perfect. So let's get started. Um, my topic is understanding of PDLLA and introduction of Juveluk in Lenisna uh, with complication management. Okay. Uh, the new wave of me medical aesthetics is focusing more on gracefully aging, well aging, uh, yes, or and prejuvenation rather than rejuvenation, and uh, skin quality improvement rather than facial contouring. As we all know, collagen in our skin gradually decreases with age. Eventually, the density of skin collagen decreases, resulting in skin sagging and wrinkles on the skin. There are several ways to re regenerate collagen in our skin. Uh, first, we can use cosmetics or take uh, collagen supplements, or a more active way is induce uh, wound healing process through energy-based devices or mesoneedling. However, uh, the most effective way to regenerate collagen is to induce foreign body reactions using polymer injections, especially biocompatible synthetic polymers. During inducing foreign body reactions and activating unhealing process by synthetic polymers, overall skin improvements such as wrinkle improvement skin elasticity increase and uh, skin tone increase can be achieved. The, the aesthetic 
medical aesthetic market for skin firming and tightening is expanding gradually, uh, along with the recent trend of pursuing a natural anti-aging treatment outcomes. Unlike fillers that simply restore volumes, uh, by compatible synthetic polymers such as PDLLA, today's topic, can cover the entire process from volume replacement to skin rejuvenation. Now, let's look into what PDLLA is. PDLLA is a type of biocompatible, biodegradable synthetic polymers. These polymers are already used in many forms of eco-friendly materials around us. PDLLA is one of the, the isomers of the PLA group that has four different types of isomers. Among them, L-form and D-form are widely used for biomedical, biomedical applications. There is a visible difference between raw materials uh, made of PLLA and PDLLA. As you see in these two figures, uh, the former gives a rough and hard touch, while the latter, PDLLA, gives a fine and soft touch. PLLA particles are crystal shaped, so the surrounding tissue become highly acidic while they are hydrolyzed, resulting in uh, a more intense inflammatory reactions. However, PDLLA particles are spherical and foamy shaped, so they degrade from the inside to outside, uh, resulting in less acidic changes or less inflammatory reactions in the surrounding tissue. And the degradation time is a little shorter than uh, PLLA particles. So it can be expected that PDLLA would, would be much more suitable for intradermal injections. According to an article published in 2001, when PDLLA particles are injected into the skin tissue, Giant cells are observed until seven to eight months after injection. But after about a year, a giant cell is no longer observed. As you see on the right, uh, this histologic finding with mesenstrichrom stain shows a marked increase in collagen fibers, which are stained in a violet color, purple color, um, it's six months after PDLA was injected into the dermis. Now I'm going to introduce two types of products made of PDLA powder. Uh, actually, they are my favorite uh, treatment modalities recently. Uh, Juveluk and Lenisna. Um, Juveluk has less concentration of PDLA and smaller particle size than Lenisna. Juveluk is for intradermal injection, and uh, lenisna is for subdermal or subcutaneous fat layer injection. And there's one thing to check at this point. Uh, what are the ideal conditions of biostimulating polymers for intradermal use? Uh, they need to be highly biocompatible, and the outer shape should be smooth and spherical and the inside has to show a foamy shape. And most importantly, the diameter of particles should not exceed 50 micrometers. These conditions correspond with those of Zuvelu. These figures are uh, six months after Zuvelu was injected into, uh, into the dermis. The histologic finding shows um, significant reduction in number of early particles. Currently, fillers made of four types of synthetic polymers are available in the aesthetic market. And um, I'm using all of them uh, currently. PCL is, has a relatively the weakest resistance to heat, uh, while PLLA and PDLLA show relatively strong resistance to heat. PDO degrades, to, uh, degrades the most quickly. Um, 
before six months. And although PDLLA and PDO uh, do not have a powerful volumizing effect, uh, they have a better safety profile from much less risk of nodules formation, allowing uh, intradermal injections. Uh, however, a PDLLA can provide uh, some volume effect compared to PDO, but a little less effective, less if, uh, volume effect than compared to uh, PLLA. Now let's take a look at the clinical use of clinic uh, Lenisna and Juvelu. Juvelu provides a powerful dermal remodeling effect, while Lenisna provides a natural volumizing and skin lifting or tightening effect. The common effect of the two is skin firming. So combining both products at once, a total 3D facial rejuvenation can be achieved. The recommended uh, dilution method for Juvelook uh, is to dilute 6 ml of normosilin. Actually, it's my personal uh, dilution method, but I believe that this method is most widely uh, used, used recently. So after um, diluting reconstitution of 6 ml of normosilin, uh, we should wait until one day, at least one day, uh, at least two hours, but uh, we should shake well. Uh, in less than two hours, uh, there could be some uh, particles aggregation. So it, it's very important to uh, set an incubation time, uh, about one day. And um, before use, I uh, shake more using a vortex mixer. And I take two ml out of six ml for one treatment session, and then mix two ml of non crossing HA. Uh, when treating skin pores, mixing with botulinum toxin will be helpful, of course. Uh, when injecting the mixture intradermally, I use a multi needle injector or manual injection with three, uh, 30 G needle uh, with four mm length, or both methods at the same time. Uh, and a laser, laser pressure-based microjet device could be also uh, a good uh, drug uh, delivery modality. It is important to repeat three treatment session at four weeks intervals for the initial treatment uh, in order to get prolonged effect by the accumulation of collagen in the dermis. This protocol is about Juvelu. And for maintenance treatments, repeat another treatment session uh, every six to uh, three to six months. For Lenisna, it is recommended to dilute uh, with eight ml of nomosaline, uh, preferably one day of incubation time. Uh, after vortex shaking, a small amount of lidocaine is generally mixed, and if necessary, uh, one or one to two ml of soft HA filler, I mean soft uh, cross-link HA filler, can be mixed uh, to compensate or enhance a weak volumizing effect of Lenisna, but it's optional, not always. And uh, when using, uh, when mixing uh, Lenisna emulsion with the uh, crosslink, crosslink HA filler, uh, you should use back and forth method at least 30 times of uh, back and forth uh, passages to make sure that uh, the, the viscous, viscous uh, solution and less viscous solution uh, is mixed well, uh, evenly mixed. When injecting Lenisna, I prefer to use 22G cannula into subdermal plane. Uh, in order to distribute the solution evenly, a sufficient dissection using fanning or cross hatching technique is necessary during the injection. Don't forget a gentle massage right after injection, but uh, additional post-treatment massage for five days is not necessary. Since Lenisna has a low risk of nodule formation, 
It can be applied to the entire face and neck, except the lower lid area. Once lens now immersion is injected into the subdermal plane, it provides effective dermal remodeling effect through a continuous dermal stimulation. So when I use Lenisna, I try to dissect more and uh, but very gently and uh, more evenly to make more mechanical stimulation during injection. These are uh, entry point and usual, my personal amount of use for each part of the face. Um, yeah, you can just refer to it because uh, the exact amount should be customized. So we need some guidelines, but uh, for pr in practice, uh, we should use depending on patient's uh, requirements or patient's uh, facial skin conditions. In general, I recommend, yes. Uh, uh, pardon? Uh, do we have any questions? Uh, if there are any questions, please uh, click for question and answers, and then I will read all those questions after the, the lecture. Okay, so I will continue, right? Yes, yes, please continue. Of okay, okay, okay. So uh, in general, I recommend my patients to get two uh, treatment sessions at uh, about six weeks intervals for the initial treatment. And I think third treatment session uh, is optional, not always, uh, if required. Uh, to maintain good outcomes, it is advisable to repeat one or two treatment sessions every six months. Uh, so uh, the six months of interval is, is uh, quite uh, important because uh, if you put too much particles into the skin, uh, it will be, they will be uh, accumulated too much. So, uh, especially when using Lenisna uh, after um, achieving good outcomes and only to maintaining uh, the results, then I just wait until six months and then re-inject. One month after dilution stored at uh, room temperature, the particle shape of Juvaluk in Lenisna was relatively well maintained, but three months after dilution, a noticeable deformation in the shape of particles was observed. So uh, it means that it's better to use them within one month after dilution, after reconstitution. So now I will show you a video about Juveluk injection using manual intradermal injection technique. So I'm, now I'm using a 30G uh, short needle with four mm lengths. And the, the target layer, target uh, depth is uh, about one to 1.5 mm from the skin surface. Uh, actually, the exact depth should be different depending on the, the area of the face. The where the skin is quite thick, uh, you can inject um, deeper than 1.5 mm and uh, the bolus injection amount will be a bit increased. Uh, this part, I'm targeting the, the pores and skin scars. So that's why I'm injecting a little bit deeper. Now uh, I'm dissecting, I'm uh, making a subsidion technique using the needle. Uh, so before injection, subsidion from multiple points, or you can do a um, fanning technique as well. So after a small subsidion uh, and then uh, inject, you inject, then uh, the, the effect will be much better. And uh, the distance between two points uh, may vary, but about one centimeter. And injection amount should not be too much. If you inject it too much, then uh, it's better to massage very strongly to uh, prevent uh, two visible lumps. This video is uh, about contouring the upper and mid face uh, using Lenisna. So I, now I'm uh, checking the hills and valley. Uh, so where the facial contour has 
concavity, then uh, I check and I try to inject into this area. Forehead is one of very common indication area uh, for lenisina injection. And uh, these days I inject more lenisina than HA fillers on, in the forehead. So just like uh, filler injections, entry points are, yeah, I'm using this uh, medial eyebrow end point. Of course, there's uh, some neurovascular neuro bend, bend, uh, bundles, uh, such as supratrochlear arteries and nerves, but it's okay because I'm inserting very superficially and then I go deeper. But however, when I, when I use Lenisna, uh, I use into multiple layer, not only deep layer, uh, subdermal plane is also um, available. Uh, so it's rather than um, focusing on the depths, uh, you, you should focus on even injections. So uh, take enough time to inject, uh, but smaller volume per threading. And after injection, I use a dry girls uh, to make even distribution. And for temple, if the temple uh, depression is quite severe, then I would inject HA filler into deep layer, just above the bone. And then uh, I use lenisna into uh, interfascia layer, which is uh, between uh, superficial and deep temporal fascia. So the, in, uh, between this, these two fascias, as we, we all know that uh, the, the tissue is quite loose. So uh, the solution will be easily spread. And for the cheek, uh, just like filler injection, you can uh, use uh, by fanning or cross-hatching cross -hatching technique. And from the low part, you can also approach uh, deep layer I'm targeting now medial soof. Of course, uh, infrauter area is not a very recommended area, but if you keep the layer deep, always deep, it's okay. And inject very small volume. And for nasolabial fold, uh, multiple layers are used, uh, or just like temple areas, uh, you can use HA filler into deep layer uh, in combination. And I'm, now I'm, uh, Fixing the accordion line. The accordion line are quite uh, difficult to correct, you know, by uh, HA filler, but using lens now you can easily correct. But uh, I approach uh, perpendicularly to the line uh, to make um, a perpendicular collagen columns to the accordion lines. So then uh, the, the lines will, will be much more improved. So this is immediate after injection. You are seeing that uh, the cheek are swollen, uh, but it, after two or three days, uh, the solution will be decreased. And um, depending on the area and purpose of treatment, a combination treatment is commonly performed with the following treatment modalities. Among them, um, most clinicians are, um, they agree that RF devices seem to be the best match, the best uh, coupling with Lanisna or Juvelu, uh, especially when performed after PDLA injection. Uh, in addition, bottom toxin and HA filler are also very commonly used as a combined or cocktail treatment. So let's talk about uh, briefly about the side effect. Uh, this picture is uh, showing uh, nodules formations after injection. Uh, interdermal large bone injection to very thin skin may result in lumps formation. Yes, but in the case of lumps found immediately after injection, uh, you can be easily resolved uh, by strong massage. Uh, if it's not necessary um, and uh, the nodules last over time, uh, it can be relieved by using needle RF with stacking method. A, lit, a little bit strong uh, power. Uh, however, even 
uh, without any treatment, uh, in most cases, lumps or nodules rarely last more than three to four months. So uh, it's just temporary and you don't need to worry about it. But as uh, other treatments, it's better to avoid, prevent these uh, problems, adverse events by uh, enough dilution and uh, enough incubation time and do not inject too superficially large bolus uh, amount. And for lower lead or neck skin, usually the, the skin is quite thin. So it's better to use um, multi-needle injector or um, I would use, I would recommend to use Lenisna intra uh, subcutaneous fat layer. Uh, so intradoma injection should be very carefully done in these areas. However, sometimes, uh, but very rare, rarely, uh, there may be an allergic reaction by a solution mix, maybe together, or uh, metal components, components of the needle uh, may cause some allergic reaction. But these allergic reactions are much more influenced by intrinsic factors. The patient's um, medical history, medical records should be uh, examined. But anyway, uh, these kind of uh, adverse events are very rare. But if you see this uh, effect or these outcomes, then uh, I would recommend to inject triamcinol on intralegional injection and uh, oral prednisolone or doxycycline or together at least two weeks, if necessary, more than one month uh, required. I'll show you uh, a few patients before and after, before working my lecture. Okay, uh, she has a very, she had very rough texture over the face, but after juvenile treatment, uh, you can see that uh, her face uh, has a lot uh, smoother uh, texture and less wrinkles. O of course, uh, Juvelu is quite good for uh, skin scar treatments. Uh, of course, uh, when combined with fractional laser, uh, the, you can achieve better results. And Lenisna can create a very smooth and natural augmentation of forehead or other areas of uh, face. So if patients don't want HA filler injection or are they already failed uh, in previous uh, treatments, then um, I would strongly recommend Lenisna. And for uh, old patients with uh, skin laxity, uh, Lenisna can create not only optimal volume, but also skin firming and tightening at the same time. So it's quite uh, beneficial for these patients. Even uh, not to all patients, some patients uh, have skin sagging and skin uh, thinning or uh, skin, uh, skin uh, loose skin, then uh, just use Lenisna. And for the neck, uh, if a patient has uh, only a skin texture, uh, want to improve the skin texture, you can use Juvelu only or uh, patients with skin laxity, neck skin laxity, I would recommend to use Lenisna and Juvelu uh, in combination at the same time. This is my conclusion. Um, uh, clinically, the biggest advantage of PDLLA emulsion is uh, that despite being a beginner for these uh, injectables, uh, safe, successful procedures could be done, available, through this treatment, an effective skin tightening and volumizing control can be achieved in a very natural way. In addition, uh, very, um, various dilution ratios uh, can be applied according to the purpose of treatment. It's just like uh, there are many kinds of uh, coffee uh, types on the menu of the coffee shop, and we can choose the taste of coffee we want. Similarly, Lensna and Juvelu can be tuned uh, through various dilution ratios, which allow a wide range of clinical applications depending on the purpose of treatment, such as facial volume replacement, skin laxity correction, skin scar and pore improvement, and general anti-aging skin rejuvenation as well. So uh, when both skin rejuvenation and volume replacement are required, then PDLA emulsion could be 
a wonderful choice. Okay, that's it for my uh, presentation today. Thank you for watching my presentation. Thank you, Dr. Cho, for a great lecture. Thank you very much. We've got a few questions. Uh, first one, uh, I think is quite simple. What is the NS when you dilute initially the instant? I think that uh, I could even um, give the answer. It's normal saline, Dr. Contreras. It's normal saline, it's a uh, solution 0.9% of uh, uh, chloride natrium. Uh, the second question is for Dr. Uh, Cho. Should we do aspiration before injection to be sure that we didn't hit the blood vessel? Uh, yes, normally aspiration is necessary, but uh, uh, the, the question means uh, lenisna, right? So, but I, since I'm using quite thick cannula, 22G cannula, actually uh, it's very hard to uh, inject intravascularly. So uh, almost 0%, zero percent, zero possibility of uh, intravascular injection. But uh, why not aspiration? So uh, anytime we, sh we should be more careful. So aspiration is uh, recommendable, recommended, but not absolutely necessary. Another question, what is the procedure in case of complication as HA hyaluronic acid? Um, I think the doctor meant that if we mix uh, cross-linked hyaluronic acid with lenisna, what is the procedure? Uh, and should we use halalize, uh, halalize uh, to dissolve it? Yes, in case of complications, uh, but also I think it's a question about lenisna, right? Um, because when using lenisna, I sometimes use uh, cross-linked HA. So if you want to lessen volume, you can use hyaluronidase, but since I'm using only one to two ml uh, for eight ml of uh, lenisna, so it would be 10 to 20% only. So um, this very small portion of HA filler, uh, if you get rid of this uh, filler portion, uh, may provide very small, um, small way of treatment maybe. So I think, uh, the only complication is um, uh, not enough volumizing, you no. Know? So yes. you only have to do one more session. There is also one very interesting paper about the diameter of the microspheres. Mm -hmm. If they are uh, less than 50 or 60 microns, they usually uh, pass through the um, uh, capillary vessels. So there is very high probability if you even inject the lenisna into bloodstream, the sheer force of bloodstream will immediately dilute the lenisna. So those spheres will pass through the arteries without clogging them like in hyaluronic cross-linked hyaluronic acid. So, so the safety of lenisna is far better than classic approach to volumizing phase volumization like uh, using hyaluronic acid. Another uh, question, is uh, from uh, Dr. Maya Abbas. Some doctors advocate the exclusive use of needles. It's very interesting uh, concept of uh, very brave. <laughs> use only needles instead of cannulas. How to adapt injections to only needles uh, injectors? Yes, such very interesting question. Um, yeah, it's also a question about Lenisna, right? Um, yes. Yes, yes, I think um, there are some pros and cons. Using needle, you can, um, you can inject the solution into very precise depths, layer plane, uh, that is uh, immediate subdermal plane or even deep dermal plane. So I think um, the needle can provide this very precise injection, however, uh, for beginners, I wouldn't recommend needle because uh, you may cause some um, bleeding and bruising. And since lenisna has a, a relatively higher uh, size of particles, so using a very thin needle, uh, you couldn't inject uh, naturally. So uh, you uh, should use uh, 21G or at least 23G needle. 
uh, then uh, it would be very aggressive, I think. So, um, yeah, so Another the guideline is that, um, <laughs> that um, if you ask uh, the worldwide known specialist for safety of injections, uh, for example, Denis Demiriak from Turkey or Dr. Redka Svoboda from Europe, they insist to use cannulas. The more you use cannulas, the safer you are. So cannula is the mm -hmm. basic uh, technique for uh, using a classic uh, approach. I mean, hyaluronic acid, cross-linked hyaluronic acid, or lenisna. Uh, needle is uh, rather uh, preferable for juvalook or mesotherapies, not for mm -hmm. uh, classic approach for volumization. Cannula is far, far more safe for us. Totally agree with you. Is mm -hmm. uh, how to uh, how do Juvaluk or Nista compare in terms of safety in case of vascular incidents? I think that we 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 have spoken mm -hmm. about that. Um, please, could you clarify or explain more about mixing process with hyaluronic acid non-crosslinked in case of Juvaluk and crosslinked in case of Lenista, and a soft filler? Any preference about soft fillers? Uh, soft fillers. I'm using um, not a specific soft filler. So uh, any soft filler you you are using in your clinic. Low, le low level of cross linkage. That's right. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Any soft filler. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any insights about vascular complications? It was uh, in especially on forehead or glabella. So I think that uh, we have spoken already about the the, the vascular complications. Uh, what is the protocol for radio frequency and lenisna? Would you uh, would uh, what would be time distance between those treatments? Maybe uh, I already mentioned about it, so maybe I can share my protocols and my uh, dilution method uh, so later maybe on it because be a subject in next uh, meeting. <laughs> yeah, this would be very interesting because I also yeah. use radio frequency combined with with calorie stimulation. It's very uh, very interesting uh, protocol for uh, for mm -hmm. our patient. Uh, how mm -hmm. many milliliters of Juvaluk is recommended for neck area? Another neck question. area, yes. I think, um, yeah, almost the same amount as uh, full face uh, I'm using, but a little bit uh, requires a little bit less amount, but uh, when covering the jawline, yeah, almost similar. So I use two uh, syringes. I mean, uh, two of six and another two of six. So uh, to cover full face and the neck. All right. So there is another question, but I think that it's some kind of uh, introduction of my <laughs> my next um, lecture. Could you please recommend the use of Juvaluk for repository orbital rejuvenation? If yes, uh, protocol, please. So I think that it's some kind of <laughs> introduction of my uh, lecture. Thank you, Dr. Mm -hmm. Adam Scherer. <laughs> Uh, so I think that um, it's time to uh, uh, yeah. thank you very much, Dr. Che, for your great lecture and all the uh, answers. And it's my time pleasure. for me to present myself. Uh, uh, excuse me, uh, I'm seeing uh, uh, another question from Dr. Sol, or what is gold stick in video? The gold stick is a vibrator. Uh, oh, it's okay. very cheap. Yeah, it's to reduce the, the, the pain and the patient will be more convenient uh, during injection. It's quite yes. effective. Yes. All right. So, Dr. Chen, thank you very much. You're welcome. To listen to your lecture. Thank you very much. So, it's now, it's now time for, for introduce myself. Um, I think I could uh, share my... Uh, second, please. Where am I? Okay, here. Uh, I will share. Okay. My name is uh, Bartłomiej Sobolewski, and I am a medical director in Europe, in, in uh, Poland. I am also CEO and owner of Laboratorium Piękna in Polish. It's in English Beauty Lab. It's a static medicine clinic in Poland. And I, in my everyday practice, I focus on introduction and development of the most modern technologies uh, to get great results with maximum safety for our, uh, for our patients. Uh, the safety is the, the highest priority in my uh, everyday 
practice. And together with Beauty Europe, I have introduced Lenisna and Juvaluk to the European market, it was about two years ago. And since then, I think that um, there is no better uh, procedure for uh, many different indications. I have a great pleasure to present you Juvaluk procedures for eyelid and face rejuvenation or for Tedro and lower eyelid rejuvenation. I will present you my considerations on how to achieve maximum safety and to avoid nodules formation. So of course the Juvaluk uh, indications are feeling of skin cavities to restore um, a volume of soft tissues and it's recommended also to, um, uh, to uh, uh, sorry, I have to close one uh, window. Excuse me, I have to go back. It is recommended to be used for um, uh, rebuild of um, any morphological asymmetries for a face as well, or other body areas. And very important, uh, the Juve look is uh, perfect for skin collagen stimulation as a mesotherapy uh, procedure for our patients. So the indications are Tedro filling, lower eyelid collagen stimulation or a lower eyelid rejuvenation, skin revitalization and face, neck and decollete uh, areas as a, a mesotherapy, reduction of enlarged skin pores, and also a very interesting indication to mm, re reduce acne scars, uh, usually in combination with fractional uh, procedures, uh, radio frequency, microneedling, or uh, ablasive uh, CO2, for example, uh, fractional lasers. The protocol uh, which I use in everyday practice uh, uh, is the dilution um, with sterile distilled water mixed with lidocaine. There is very interesting paper on the, the um, strategy of uh, dilution of polydialectic acid um, preparation. And the uh, sterile water is slightly better than a uh, normal saline. Um, the normal saline is uh, in my clinic used only in case of local anesthetic uh, allergies. It's very rare uh, circumstance. So uh, we uh, mainly uh, dilute uh, the Juvaluk with three mils of water, sterile distilled water for injections and one mil of lidocaine, usually 2%. To prepare already um, ready preparation for the injection, uh, and we use both uh, 32 or 30 g needle uh, in needle injections and 25 or even 27 g cannula for eyelid area. Of course, we uh, we use that uh, what I mentioned before, uh, three mils of water plus one mil of lidocaine. We use vortex, and there is no a way other way to uh, safely and quickly prepare this uh, solution. Uh, you need this special device, this vortex, to prepare Lenista and uh, Juvaluk. Uh, then uh, we uh, use or I use uh, one mil of uh, one mil of that uh, solution, uh, prepared solution uh, after 30 minutes of shaking. Uh, to lower eyelid area for both sides. So half mil of, of Juva look for one side and half mil for another side. And three mils, um, the, the, another part of this um, uh, preparation is used as a mesotherapy because I use a uh, mesogun or a uh, vital injector. It's a uh, already mechanical device for uh, injections. It gives you more control of the layer or the depth of the injections and you can use less amount of um, uh, Juvaluk per one injection, it seems to be also uh, a way to avoid uh, formation of nodules. We can use it safely, uh, or we can uh, unuse preparations store for seven to, uh, 72 hours in the refrigerator, uh, but we know that we can even wait up to one month after one month, as uh, my previous uh, lecture was, but after one month, um, the formation of those uh, um, spheres is uh, decreased and they are uh, losing their uh, structure. After removing from the fridge, you should uh, set it at room temperature for about 15 minutes and then stir it or mix it with vortex in, for five minutes. 
we do not use cold preparation. It's quite uh, uncomfortable for the patient to, to bear it, to, to inject cold uh, um, uh, solution. Juvaluk is designed to inject deep, deeply inter intradermally or subcutaneously. The subcutaneous tissue is uh, usually uh, the area we use it in subcutaneous tissue is uh, lower eyelid and terdral area. We know that we cannot use um, lenista in this area because it's too strong collagen stimulator to safely perform injections in lower eyelid and terdral area. But Juvaluk seems to be perfect for this, uh, for this um, correction of deep teardrops and the rejuvenation of uh, skin of lower eyelid. Uh, there were many questions about how we can perform this because uh, we know after experiences, many years of experiences after um, using of sculpture that there is very risky area to very prone to form nodules. But if we use uh, the already tested a procedure. I will show you in a few minutes this procedure. There is really very high level of safety to use Juvelook as a collagen stimulator and some kind of dermal filler in the terrier area and lower eyelid area. I usually advise my patients to undergo two or three procedures every three months. Um, the, the European market is maybe a little bit different than um, the Korean market. Uh, and we advise to use, uh, to do uh, longer um, gaps between uh, procedures. So two or three procedures every three months. Juvelook and Lenisna are a perfect uh, combination. So they could and should be combined together. Uh, we treat uh, patients uh, with a volumetric preparation, which is lenisna, and is designed to rebuild deep face volume and to stimulate uh, native collagen. Juvelook is less concentrated preparation, and we inject it directly to the skin, to the subcutaneous tissue or intradermally very deep, and in the lower eyelid area. So we can combine those two procedures to get those full face rejuvenations both the volumization of the zygomatic area and the label folds, filling volumization of the line area, and tear draw filling and lower eyelid skin uh, armoring with juva look. Uh, so we also combine them uh, in the same manner, I mean, two or three procedures every three months. The injection technique in the lower eyelid area is up to um, every injector. Uh, every uh, doctor has its own experiences and its own way to avoid um, uh, complications in this area. But uh, I don't know if you can see my, if you can see my, uh, no, I think there is no pointer. Uh, the left uh, strategy, I mean, the, the lowest point of injection is my favorite and I use it for uh, tedro um, filling or tedro volumization with Juvaluk. And the, uh, the lateral injection or entry point is for uh, lower eyelid area. I will show you in a while on a short film how to, how to do this procedure. So we use uh, 0.2 milliliter in a retrograde linear technique with cannula just in the line of uh, tedro. Uh, then we use 0.3 milliliter of Juvaluk with fanning technique with the, this uh, medial, uh, sorry, lateral entry point in the lower eyelid to do the um, even distribution of uh, Juvaluk um, solution just in the subcutaneous tissue. Uh, it's very important to remember that this is the only area of our uh, face or the subcutaneous tissue uh, where there is no present subcutaneous fat tissue. The fat tissue is uh, intraorbitally under the muscle and the fascia. Under the skin, there is no visible uh, or preparable uh, fat tissue. So we just inject in the subcutaneous tissue. There is some kind of uh, loose, uh, very thin layer of uh, loose um, uh, fibrotic tissue connecting the skin with uh, muscle, orbicularis um, uh, muscle, oculi muscle. So 0.3 milliliter for each side uh, for lower eyelid area. And then the left three milliliters of the solution, I put it into the vital injector and perform uh, deep intradermal injections 
uh, usually by a vital injector or the, any kind of mesogun, on the depth of 1.6 to 2 millimeters. It depends on the uh, thickness of the skin. Man uh, or uh, male uh, skin is thicker and even sometimes deeper than 2.2, 2.4 millimeters um, is chosen by me on the uh, vital injector. Uh, boluses, 15 to 20 microliters per, per one bolus. It usually, those uh, devices uh, have uh, those cartridges um, uh, with five or nine needles. So it's about two to three microliters per one uh, per one um, needle in this uh, cartridge. If we perform uh, those injections by hand, I advise to inject at least at 1.6 millimeter deeply intradermally to avoid uh, formulation of, of nodules and not so big deposits. So small deposits uh, with uh, quite deep injections. For full phase rejuvenation, usually, usually with three milliliters of Juvaluc uh, put into the injector, I can uh, easily perform the procedure for full phase rejuvenation and neck rejuvenation. So there is very interesting uh, proposal for our patients and an offer. Uh, we uh, do three pro procedures at once. Uh, first uh, uh, part of the procedure is tedro uh, filling and uh, lower eyelid rejuvenation. The second part of this procedure is full face uh, rejuvenation, collagen stimulation in the um, uh, skin of the face. And the third part of this uh, procedure is uh, skin rejuvenation of the neck. So uh, every area uh, is uh, performed with a uh, vital injector. Now I will you I will uh, present you our strategy. So I collect or withdraw one mil uh, for the uh, for this one mil syringe, and this is the amount of Juvaluc uh, used for uh, both sides of lower eyelid area. I mean both uh, tendril and lower eyelid per se. Three milliliters is put into the. Uh, mesogun, whatever you like. There are many devices in the world available right now. The entry point is uh, in line of Tedro with 27G uh, cannula. The, the this film is a little bit older uh, strategy. Uh, Open wine was uh, um, injected subcutaneously and opened wine under the uh, orbicularis muscle. But now I have resigned. Uh, from this second bolus, I mean, 0.1 under the muscle, I inject 0.2 milliliter just in the subcutaneous tissue. It's uh, more safe, more comfortable for the patient because uh, uh, crossing uh, the uh, muscle with uh, cannula is quite uncomfortable. So altogether, 0.5 milliliter per, per one side um, for the eye rejuvenation and the uh, injections with injector with the mesogun for the full face. It's very effective, very comfortable for the patient. Of course, we use uh, topical anesthesia. It's usually 20% of lidocaine. Spot, please spot the, the level of or the depth of the injection. Those injections are, are just under the thin skin of lower eyelid, just in the subcutaneous tissue. Uh, it's another patient with uh, this new approach. I mean, 0.2 milliliter in the tertiary area and 0.3 with a finding technique in the lower eyelid area. Uh, if you are not sure if you are uh, on the proper layer, just lift a little bit the cannula and you should see this um, a small amount of skin or a very thin skin just under the, uh, just over the, the cannula. Uh, if so, uh, you are sure and you are safe that you are in the proper layer. Sorry. Now we will discuss some precautions and some considerations about the safety. While withdrawing the cannula, we advise our doctors when we train them to stop injecting Juvaluc with cannula one centimeter before the uh, entry point and before uh, removing the cannula from the subcutaneous tissue, because there is a risk of uh, making a small deposit uh, just in the entry point. And this is one of the reasons why we observe nodules after the uh, using of cannula in the lower eyelid area. 
uh, another um, precaution is to or uh, uh, advice is to make a gentle massage to evenly distribute preparation if the in the subcutaneous tissue, especially if we perform the injections in the lower eyelid area. And uh, uh, another very uh, important point is that we um, the the message made by patient at home is completely unnecessary in case of juvaluk in lanisna, uh, comparing to, for example, to polylactic acid, lactic acid uh, compositions like Sculptra. Um, we in Europe we, we are very aware of complications when mixing or combining two different collagen stimulators. Uh, so uh, the official um, recommendations in Europe are to uh, keep those uh, intervals between different type of collagen stimulators uh, for full face rejuvenation. If patient decided in past to use polycarpalanolactone or uh, calcium hydroxyapatite, uh, we advise to wait uh, at least 12 months after uh, calcium hydroxyapatite and 24 months after polycarpalanolactone um, injections. Uh, to minimize the risk of hyperstimulation, collagen hyperstimulation. But we try and we use the combination of polylactic DL polylactic acid with uh, aptos threads. Mm, they are composed of polylactic acid and polycarpronolactone, but usually we choose different layers of injections. Uh, we mm, uh, implement uh, threads in the subcutaneous tissue. And um, in case of lenisna and the combination with uh, barb threads with polylactic acid and caprolactone, we inject lenisna deeper in the supra periosteally periosteum uh, for uh, full face uh, volumization. These are my considerations um, about uh, the comparison of polydialectic acid and polycaprolactone and hydroxyapatite. Uh, some kind of um, not medical, but um, the way of marketing, how to sell or convince our patients uh, to, to use polydialectic acid instead of um, polycaprolactone or hydroxyapatite. Hydroxyapatite is the sh sh shortest collagen stimulator. I mean, the, it's the more, uh, the most. Um, um, prone to fast um, hydrolysis. And the package of the, the, the volume of the product is 1.5 or 1.25 milliliter. And it's quite expensive comparing to, to Lanista. And the polycaprolactone is in one milliliter vials. Uh, and the duration of effect, if we compare uh, polycaprolactone hydroxyapatite and um, polydialectic acid and polylactic acid, there are many clinical observations that the, the effect lasts uh, for the longest period of time after polylactic acids, generally speaking. And very important thing is that we have um, very interesting um, offer for our patients is Juvaluk uh, for lower eyelid area and tertiary um, uh, rejuvenation. And we uh, also remember about body procedures uh, um, for Lenisna injections. Now I will show you some of the results. This was the first patient in Poland and in Europe. Uh, sorry for the quality of the, the first picture. Uh, this is another patient uh, before and after two months of uh, one procedure of Juvaluk. We can spot a perfect uh, volumization of Tedro and the um, uh, skin tightening of lower eyelid. This is another patient there was no botulinum toxin used in this case. Uh, and there is a very strong uh, uh, decrease of those very uh, gentle little wrinkles uh, after uh, Lanista, only after one uh, procedure of Juvaluk. Sorry, Juvaluk, not, not Lanista. The same patient. Uh, this is one of my workers. Um, uh, she had only one uh, procedure with Juvaluk with this protocol I, I have showed you. And there is one very interesting thing. Uh, we observed uh, a slight decrease of hyperpigmentation after Juvaluk. 
uh, also not only the volumization of the third row, but also the, the decrease of amount of of uh, those um, uh, hyperpigmentation. Mm. This is one of the most spectacular patients with very deep, typical in Poland, uh, very deep third row. And this is patient after, um, I think, three or four months after one procedure of Juvaluk, uh, just before the second procedure. She's very happy with uh, the results of uh, collagen stimulation in the lower eyelid. Another patient with very similar, very deep third row, it's very typical in Europe. Uh, I think that there, are, there is a very interesting uh, um, um I've got the pleasure to, 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 to hear this lecture on Kolkida, uh, on Aptos conference, that there are very um, crucial differences between different parts of, of the world. And uh, the aesthetic medicine looks different in Europe, looks different in Far East, and it looks different in, for example, uh, South America due to different anatomical problems of our patients. Another patient, young lady with also a very deep tedro uh, and very mm, satisfactory effect. My friend, Dr. Eva Rybicka, uh, one procedure uh, of mesotherapy of neck, five milliliters of uh, Juvaluk injected, uh, I think with needle by hand, with such spectacular effect, very uh, difficult to, mm, to manage such um, uh, very floppy, very difficult to rejuvenate uh, skin of neck. Another doctor from Poland with his effects, um, Dr. Michael uh, showed us uh, some satisfactory effects after uh, one procedure of Juvaluk, another patient. Uh, Another one. The Tedro area is very common in Poland. This is very popular problem uh, that we have to manage. And there is there, there was no reasonable or, or safe uh, procedure uh, until uh, Juvaluk. Uh, hyaluronic acid in this area is very risky. Mm, there is high risk of migration of, of the deposit of hyaluronic acid after many years. And there is uh, a risk of edema in this area after injection cross-link heroin acid. So uh, the only alternative is uh, is like fat transfer, uh, but we know it's very safe, very comfortable uh, to inject uh, with very nice effects. But not so many patients will undergo liposuction to to do the the tedro filling with uh, uh, fat tissue. Another patient with tedro. And hyperpigmentation in this area, we can also spot the, uh, the uh, lower grade hyperpigmentation after the procedure. Uh, some adverse uh, events we have spotted. We have performed uh, 3,500 procedures in uh, Poland since June 2021. 90% of, um, of all Juvalek treatments uh, was performed also in the lower eyelid. So it's very, very uh, common um, uh, procedure in this area in Poland. Uh, only 11 uh, reported nodules as adverse event because I ask all uh, my sales representatives to, to get the information about adverse events after the procedures. So there is 0.31% uh, of complication rate in the lower eyelid area in manner of, of nodule formation. Main causes after the analysis of these uh, cases we have mm, observed in Poland, that main causes of nodule formation is use of needle in eyelid area, because there were some doctors uh, trying to use a needle injection. Um, as previous lecturer, Dr. Cha uh, uh, spotted that if you use needle, you can easily uh, lose the um, layer control. Uh, use of cannula gives you uh, the easiest way to control the layer you are working with. So if you use needle, you can easily uh, do the too superficial injection, especially in the lower eyelid area when the skin is very thin. Uh, so uh, the use of needle and too superficial injection can be caused by the use of needle. And the, another point is not following the procedures. Usually it was the problem of too much uh, volume, too superficially and too often. 
And there is very interesting case, uh, female, 45 years old, symptoms, edema of lower eyelid. She came to my clinic um, to, to, to undergo a consultation because the, there was a problem after Juvaluk injections. After uh, obtaining a medical history, uh, there was no serious comorbidities. On January 2022, there was a red yes, a hydroxyapatite uh, injection to tertiary area, completely with no um, reason. I don't know what was the idea of such injection. And then April 20, 2022, after three or four months, the first Juvaluk, 1.5 milliliter per side, interdraw and lower eyelid with needle. And after one month, again, second Juvaluk procedure uh, with 1.5 milliliter per one side, interdraw uh, area and lower eyelid. So the symptoms, uh, fortunately, was only the edema of lower eyelid. The treatment was very effective with all asteroids. And the, um, if it wouldn't help, the only strategy is to use collagenase uh, locally in this area after the combination of those two um, uh, different uh, collagen stimulators in this very risky area. The reason why I didn't uh, decide to use uh, locally injected uh, steroids uh, was that there was no uh, papable uh, nodules after the Juvaluk. Another case, it was my patient, uh, a female, 43 years old. Uh, the symptoms were uh, palpable deposits after lenista injections in nasal labial folds, marionet lines, and uh, neck. And the medical history, uh, there was rheumatoid arthritis. Uh, this patient suffers from rheumatoid arthritis, of course, in remission with biological treatment. But this was the, um, the first case uh, when I had to use uh, local steroid injections. Um, I usually use betamethasone beta dipropionate. Uh, it's diprofos in uh, Europe. Uh, uh, I usually mix uh, 0.7 milliliter of betamethasone uh, with 0.3 milliliter of lidocaine. And then I use 32G needle and I precisely inject uh, this solution straight into deposits into these nodules. Sometimes I use ultrasound uh, guidance if there are deeper uh, deposits or deeper, deeper nodules, uh, just to inject a very small amount of uh, long-lasting steroid uh, straight to the nodule. Uh, after two uh, sessions, uh, all the mm, papable deposits uh, decreased uh, uh, in a very satisfactory manner. So patient uh, is very happy after this, this treatment. And some take home messages after all the considerations, experiences of using clonist and Juvaluk. Juvaluk is very effective and optimal treatment for tear draw area. Juvaluk is very safe for tear draw because we haven't spotted uh, nodules in this area except uh, some single cases of uh, nodules in the entry point. So that's why we should stop injecting one centimeter before uh, removing the cannula uh, from the subcutaneous tissue. Juvaluk is very effective in lower eyelid rejuvenation, is very effective in full face skin rejuvenation, is very easy to prepare and use, and is very effective and profitable treatment for your clinics. Uh, remember to take a medical history of the patient uh, especially uh, to avoid patients with autoimmune, autoimmune diseases, uh, because there is, um, there is a higher risk of uh, overstimulation of collagen production in these uh, groups of patients. Um, I think it would be very interesting uh, subject for the next Julia um, meeting. Uh, follow the procedure. Uh, if you follow the procedure, it's tested. Uh, we've done many uh, thousands of patients with this procedure, and we know it's uh, fully safe for the doctor and for the patient. Avoid two superficial injections. Use cannula in eyelid area. Don't try to use needle in this area. And keep recommended intervals. Two short uh, intervals may cause also hyperstimulation of colon.
and the treatment of nodules, uh, the first and the safest uh, procedure is to inject saline, normal saline, straight into the nodule, especially for the beginners. Uh, use 32G needle, uh, typical needle from mesotherapy, and inject saline just straight into the nodule. If you are experienced with autologous procedures and you have uh, um, IPRF uh, sets in your clinic, you can use IPRF injections also straight to the nodules. If it won't help, the another uh, step is to uh, inject uh, steroids uh, locally just straight into the nodule. Uh, and um, if it won't help, uh, we advise to use steroids orally. And with um, some problems, technical problems and formal problems, the use of collagenase uh, is not so common uh, in the world yet, but I think it's one of the best strategies for uh, recovering from uh, nodules formation. Thank you very much. Okay, I have to delete. Have to go back to Zoom. All right. Sorry. Where is my okay? Uh, so now I have a great pleasure. Uh, sorry, I have to look for questions. Mm, there is a question about uh, uh, experience on upper eyelid rejuvenation. Uh, the point is that the best strategy for upper eyelid, um, uh, because there is another kind of problems, usually the um, uh, loose skin, and we need to remove this part of the skin. So the blepharoplasty is the first strategy for uh, upper eyelid. Of course, you can use uh, Juvelook also with cannula uh, to rejuvenate the skin, especially after the procedures of uh, surgical correction. Okay, I have to, oh, yes, we are back. Uh, do you have any experience to mix Juvaluk with hyaluronic acid? No, not yet. Um, Dr. Hosung Che uh, ex um, uh, is very great inspiration for me to start combining uh, those uh, two substances together. So uh, I think that since today, I will mix them together. Uh, now, uh, I have a great pleasure to present uh, Dr. Eugene Kim from Korea. She's a celebrity in Korean Dermatology Society. Uh, she's a YouTuber and she's uh, being on various TV broadcasts in Korea. She was a key opinion leader for Sculptra before but now she has become a Juvelook lover. Uh, Dr. Kim uh, will look at her Juvelook cases for atropic uh, scars and stretch marks. And generally these cases have been treated with lasers, but the results are not dramatic. Juvelook makes some difference and we can wear a bikini with more confidence. Dr. Kim, the floor is yours. Uh, we cannot hear you. Okay. Yes. Uh, good morning. My name is Yanjin Kim. 
I'm a dermatologist in Korea. I'm currently visiting New York City, which our second dermatology office is opening soon. This is my partner, Dr. Hee-jin Kim, who will run the office. Actually, she is my sister as well, and she will help me today for the presentation. Um, I am the owner of Purin Dermatology Clinic and YouTuber. Please subscribe to my channel and you can get various tips on skincare in my channel. Soon, English subtitle will be added. I have been using PLA product for a long time because many of my patients want a natural change. I had been using Skultra for almost 10 years before Juvelu came out. And after Juvelu was launched, I have only been using Juvelu among PLA product. Uh, Juvelu is able to create more customers by not only replacing Skultra or HA fillers, but also providing solutions to indications that were difficult to treat such as stretching marks. As a result, for almost two, uh, about two years, I have been able to use nearly 1,000 vials of Jubeluk. Why do I prefer Jubeluk so much? There are many reasons but these uh, three are the main reasons to use Juvelook. The first is a variety of indications. I started use, using Juvelook mainly for fine wrinkles and nasal labial fold. And recently, I have been using Juvelook for skin rejuvenation, acne scars, and stretch mark. Juvelook has recently been called a skin solution in Korea because Juvelook can resolve many skin concerns. The second is safety. In fact, while using Skultra, I had a few granule mass. Thus, I decided not to use anymore. Uh, there are minimal side effects while using Juvelook and nodules sometimes occur, but the nodules are not related to tissue change. They can disappear quickly with thermal treatment or strong massage. Third, it is a natural treatment result. Uh, since there is no downtime after the procedure, patient can get back to their daily life immediately. The effect is natural, so it is preferred procedure for those who don't want to be caught having aesthetic procedures by others. 80% of the world's 11 to 30 year old suffers from acne, and one in five of them have acne scars. In this case, atrophic scars and hypotrophic scars may occur. Most of the acne scar patients I met had atrophic scars and recently I treat atrophic scar with Juvelook. Before using Juvelook, uh, acne scars were mainly treated using laser or RF. In this case, the skin barrier was damaged and the skin became more sensitive and it was also necessary to recover the wound on the skin after laser treatment. However, when using Juvelook, there is no need to worry about this. And I have seen that not only the scar get better, uh, but the overall quality of skin improved also. Next, uh, let's look at the stretch mark. Stretch marks are atrophic linear banded lesions that appear on the skin in the area damaged by pulling force. Histologically, the epidermis is atrophied and in the dermis, collagen fibers are seen and rearranged parallel to the skin. Most often, it can occur when the skin stretches quickly. 
uh, such as during pregnancy or rapid weight gain. Early stretch mark appear at red lines and bend on the skin, which is called the stria rubra. The purple striatum gradually turns white over time and becomes less pronounced, wrinkled, and atrophied, which is called uh, stria alba. How can we treat stretch marks so that we can regain patient confidence? <clears throat> retinoic acid such as tretinoin or glycolic acid and TC can be used for early stretch mark to have a peeling effect. And various lasers or RF treatment have been tried to treat stretch marks. But it is very rare that the atrophied skin recovers and doesn't have a dramatic effect. However, in recent years, stretchy marks have been treated using Duverup, and collagen and elastin regeneration were seen after Duverup treatment. Uh, I would like to tell you the protocol to treat uh, these atrophic scars <clears throat> and stretch mark. Reconstitution for acne scar treatment is usually using 6 cc normal saline, and sometimes 4 cc is used to inject deep and local scars. The amount of reconstitution may be slightly different depending on doctor's preference. So it can be fun to find your own recipe with Juvelup. Based on manual injection, I usually uh, 0.1 cc uh, per shot. And in order to see the effect, I recommend treatment at least three times. The injection depth is just under the scar, usually deep dermis layer. For deep scar, such as two millimeter or deeper, I prefer manual injection. For a superficial scar, such as two millimeter or less depth, I prefer using multi-needle injector or a needle RF. In this case, Juvelu was injected three times at four week intervals. <clears throat> An injection was pre uh, performed using multi um, needle injector. You can see the if effect of tightening of the skin pores as well as improving the skin of the atrophic scar area. In this case, I used a needle RF. First, um, first inject, inject or apply the reconstituted tube and look to the face and then shoot the needle RF there to penetrate juvelu into the skin. If you use a needle RF, you can see the effect a li little faster because of synergetic effect of RF heat with juvelu. In this case, juvelu was also injected using a needle RF. And you can see that not only the skin texture is improved, but also the skin quality is improved. The redness is treated and the skin tone is brightened. This case is uh, a 15 old woman with deep scar. Juvelu was placed by manual injection and you can see the scar fills up well and the border of the scar looks natural. Uh, I would like to tell you about the stretch mark treatment. I usually reconstitute Juvelu with ACC normacellin and inject uh, 0.05 cc per shot just under the stretch mark. It is usually uh, the upper dermis layer. It takes at least five treatments to be effective. 
but you can see good result that cannot seen in other treatment. Stretch mark can also be injected with various drug delivery stool, but some people inject Juvelo using a needle-free injector that can quickly inject into stretch mark in a wide area precisely target under the stretch mark. This is my colleague's case who used needle-free injector called Mirajet. I usually treat stretch mark with manual injection. Injection, I inject about uh, 0.05 cc per point and give a strong massage after the injection. I will share the photo of my cases by manual injection later. Uh, some clinics change it, um, treatment fee per vial, and some clinics charge a treatment fee in proportion to the area of stretch marks. The cases were conducted under the same protocol, and some strong collagen production ability of Juvelook allows high satisfaction for stretch marks treatment. It seems that Juvelu has various indications due to its excellent ability to regenerate collagen in the dermis. And above all, there are few side effects. So you can comfortably conduct the procedure and the satisfaction of the patient is also excellent. So I think it has become number one skin booster in Korea. That's all for today. Thank you for listening. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Yujin Kim. Great lecture, very interesting uh, application of Juvalook. It shows us that this is one of the best products in the world right now to um, focus on different aspects of skin, not also not only in uh, face rejuvenation, but also for different body um, uh, problems. Um, do we have any questions? Hello world, do we have any questions? I think that this lecture was so perfect that everything was so clear <laughs> that there is no uh, no questions. The better the lecturer, the less questions there are. <laughs> So thank you, Dr. Kim, uh, for perfect uh, lecture. Thank you. Now, thank you. now it's time to present to you Dr. Inigo de Felipe from Spain. Hello, uh, Bate. Uh, how are you doing? Well, I'm from Spain, but I'm lecturing from London. So it's not oh, uh, 430. It's 310. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay. And as you can see, it's quite sunny, which is very strange here in London, right? It's sunny today. Yeah, and the temperature, I think, is 21 uh, degrees Celsius. And here I have Marty, right, who's working with me, and we've just uh, finished some clinics today, right? I'm very happy. I have to uh, congratulate you for your presentation. I think you have a, an enormous experience. I mean, 3,510 vials, that's amazing. I mean, <laughs> I've been injecting for a long time with uh, working with different polylactic acid, but so many. I don't know whether the light is okay. Let me, let me just put myself Sorry. here. Is this okay? Okay. I'm going to share my uh screens so that um let me see how can i share this uh, let, let me see okay. i have to introduce you oh I yeah okay all right <laughs> one of the most famous dermatologists in the world yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, many, for many products and many exhibitions in the world you are operating in clinics in the uk as we can see and also in spain uh, the, Dr. Felipe started using the Insta also two years ago, so he has uh, been richly experienced in PDLLA, especially in Lenisna. And uh, Dr. Felipe is going to show us how to reconstitute Lenisna and how to inject Lenisna for facial and body augmentation. So the floor is yours. <laughs> Thank you very much. 
Right, let me see if I can share the, uh, the screen now. No, I think that you have to let me, um, let me, uh, there is a green button. Uh, but when I press it, I can't share it because I can only share you, right? But I, I don't know why. Uh, no, let me see. Is it because I am just a guest and I'm not? Um, um, I can't share it. So it's usually because I have to to be like a speaker as well or a presenter. Let's try to manage this problem. Uh, okay. Can you? Um, because you are presenting and everything, so share. No. Okay. Let me see if I can share now. Good. Yes. Now I can. Perfect. Okay. Yes. Done. Fantastic. Sure. All right. <laughs> so thank you very much uh, for my invitation. Um, I've been working with um, Lenisna for two years now, but I've been working previously with Polylacte for since 2003. How many years is that, uh, Baltic? That's uh, 18 years, right? And um, I was quite interested to know about Lenisna and how it worked because of our long uh, experience with uh, Sculptra and the previous Polylacte. So let me go through this subject now. So as we all know, there is a tremendous loss of volume as we get old, and that uh, is particularly important in some areas of the face more than others. And we know that the zygomatic area, some areas here around the mouth, lose a lot of not only collagen, but also a lot of fat tissue and connective tissue. Uh, the problem uh, usually stands because we have always tried to do uh, rejuvenation, with filling rather than with recovering elasticity. This means that most of the approaches in the past years have been to recover volume, recover volume, recover volume, and it's not always about this. So here you see a famous actor, and you can see that he has basically lost uh, the elasticity of the skin. So it's not about recovering the volume, it is uh, recovering the volume with something that provides with elasticity. And that can only be obtained with collagen. And this is very important. Collagen is a very strange molecule, a very strange protein in nature, because it can link one part to another of the tissue and can bring all these tissues together because of its elasticity. We don't have proteins like this in nature. So we know that there is a reduction of derma collagen. This uh, derma collagen accounts for 90% of our two most superficial millimeters. We also know that there is a reduction in the far compartments of the face, except two, right? And there is a tremendous loss of tensile strength of the ligaments. Um, when people discuss about rejuvenation or aging, they say, well, we've lost volume, and uh, usually plastic surgeons would say, we have lost the tensile strength of our ligaments. So the, for the first group, it would all be about injecting and recovering volume. But for the second group, which are the surgeons, everything would be about doing surgery and lifting everything surgically. I don't think that one or the other is completely right. I think there's a mixture of this. So let's see what polylactic acid can do. The first time that polylactic acid was used to rejuvenate was when it was used for HIV lipoatrophy. So this is a historical uh, case, which is very interesting, actually. Polylactic acid has been used as, um, as a, a suture. And um, many other specialists have been using it until 1999, when it was formulated and approved in Europe as an intradermal injectable implant, which was called new fill. So again, we realize and we discover that what doctors were thinking about was filling, not regeneration of collagen. 
That's why the name is Newfield. So when doctors started using Newfield, they thought it was a filler and they would produce enormous problems. So that is why many of the doctors still today in Europe think that Newfield induces nodules and granulomas, which is not true. It is not a filler. It cannot be used as a filler. So in 2004, the FDA approved the use of polylactic acid with a very specific indication, which was lipoatrophy, which is very strange. It's a very typical phenomenon of HIV patients. They don't need to, be, to have AIDS, it's just HIV. We don't know why they lose this fat compartment. So the first to publish about this uh, were the French, right? This on the left is uh, stage one, lipoatrophy. And on the right side here, you have stage two. Here is stage three and stage four. And as you can see, there is this strange lipoatrophy that only occurs with HIV patients. We don't know why. And uh, French doctors started injecting polylactic to recover the volume there. So obviously the results were amazing, were fantastic, with a great percentage of improvement. And what is most interesting of all is that if you measure exactly what happened, right, was that they mixed the product in about four to five milliliters. So that is why Vartic has told you all that I'm going to deal about um, reconstitution, because I think it's very interesting how we reconstitute this product completely in a different way today. So this is what they found, okay? They wanted to measure how much volume they would be able to recover. And here you can see, right, in circles, this is immediately after injection of Neufil. And in triangles, Neufil injection delayed by 12 weeks, what happened 12 weeks later. And you saw, well, you see here that there is a recovery of the thickness, right? Mean change of measurements from baseline, right here, of the thickness of the skin. And here in triangle, you see what happened um, after 12 weeks. So after 24 weeks, that is half a year, what we see is that the volume induced is much higher than the volume injected immediately. This means that in this period of three, four, five, six months, we synthesize new collagen, okay? So we're not filled by the product, we are making the filler. So this is probably the first time that in the history of aesthetic medicine, we realize that it is not the product, it is not the filler, the silicone, the whatever, that fills in, it is something that we produce. So it's really natural and it's about the regeneration of our skin. So obviously this continued later and later. And of course, uh, the product was used in uh, HIV patients and we can perfectly measure the improvement of the thickness of the skin, right? So this product was injected in the fat layer which is three, four millimeters deep, right? But this measurements um, uh, tell us about what's been changing in the surface of the skin. So this is the really interesting thing. Six weeks, 24 weeks, one year, two years later, there is an improvement of 43% of the thickness of the skin. So what this is telling us is that even though we were trying to fill something, we discovered that what we were doing was regenerating the skin. So these patients, let me go fast, what probably we're doing was reacting um, in an inflammatory way against the product, but then we're building up new, um, a new dermal tissue. So it is difficult to understand for us how an inflammation can uh, transform or can become a construction of new connective tissue because we know that inflammation usually destroys the tissue. But in this case, the inflammation, sorry, the inflammation meant that we were slowly, right, slowly bringing a special subtype of macrophages called M2 that were stimulating the deposition of new collagen.
So things evolved, right? We have in 2004, Scotra, and we have years later, Linista, which is a mixture between level um, and dextro uh, uh, lactic acid. So what is Linisna, right? In your, how, do, how do we explain to our patients what Linisna is, right? So it is a mixture of hyaluronic acid together with polylactic acid or a mixture of polylactic and polydeine. Also, the particles are a bit different. They range from 10 to 100 microns. So they are big enough not to be swollen by cells, but they're not as big as to cause any problems. So when we have to explain to people what is the difference, right? Usually we start with Scotland because it's the referral first product that we started working with. So uh, Scotland has got polylactic and it has a little bit of mannitol that is a, a very good hygroscopic substance. So it brings in some water. Whereas um, with um, Linisna, what we bring in is hyaluronic acid. There is also a difference between polylactic uh, acid and uh, in Scotra and in Linisna because in Scotra what we have is the PLLA, meaning it's the polylevel, which is um, usually crystallizes very well, which is whereas the PDLL, which is the formula for Linisna, is amorphous. It doesn't really crystallize. So the difference clearly is that Linisna contains a little more of polylactic in comparison to Scotra. And Linisna particles average 38 microns. They're a little bit smaller in comparison to the, the small particles of Scotra, which are a little bit bigger and larger. So this change in the size of the particles and in the composition helps in the suspension, which is usually important because once we have to inject, we find it difficult to use Scotra of those that uh, have injected a lot. This is what happens when we inject something. This is not polylactic. I think that you all know, if you know something about pathology, which you do, we all know that this is hyaluronic acid. It is an amorphous gel. It is blue because it's acid. And it kind of, uh, it's quite big, but we see that around the particles, we see a lot of new cells, especially fibroblasts, that are activated and they produce new collagen. You see this stain, this strong stain around the particles, meaning that we are synthesizing collagen. So every time we use the filler, every single time, we stimulate our dermis in order to produce new collagen. So the funny thing of this biopsy is that we take into account that the epidermis, which is here, is about 0.2 millimeters. This means that this is less than one millimeter. So my question to you, how many of you inject hyaluronic acid in the first millimeter? No one, right? Usually we use um, basically half the, um, the, the length of the needle, which is about six to seven millimeters, we use the whole uh, length of the needle, which means that when we inject hyaluronic acid or any filler, it is deposited much deeper. It's not really in the dermis. So what we are seeing here is just an experiment. It doesn't really happen in, in, in real life. So probably this is a rat model or something. In fact, it is where they tested different um, substances. So, the capacity of synthesizing new collagen will depend where you inject uh, your product. Let, let me go further, right? This is um, polylactic, right? And this is a comparison between PDO materials, right? You see here that always around any material that we inject, there will be a synthesis of new collagen, especially because there is a small degree of inflammation. So here you have polylactic acid. This is not uh, linisna, this is polylactic. And you see that particles are quite big, so they form multinuclear cells around with a little bit of inflammation. Here you see one, right, trying to engulf these big particles, and with this reaction, they produce new collagen. What's the difference between calcium hydroxy appetite? Well, most of my friends would say that calcium hydroxy appetite, or radius, is a very good stimulator of collagen, right? 
This material is biocompatible. The size of the particles are very similar and it's a great inductor of collagen. But if you read carefully in the literature, you see that calcium hydroxyapatite gives problems all the time. For example, a randomized split phase hysomorphologic study comparing a volumetric calcium hydroxyapatite. And you see here, right, at month four, collagen type three was greater with calcium hydroxyapatite, right? But then you see actually who writes this, right? And you see that the same author is always writing about calcium hydroxyapatite. And I was researching where she was working. She was um, always a consultant of the same um, at the same uh, pharmaceutical company, which means that uh, the studies that uh, the, these authors publish are basically paid and financed by the same pharmaceutical company that sells calcium hydroxyapatite. So all the things they're going to read are good, obviously. But you go when you go on and on, right? You usually discover different problems like this one, for example, nodule formation after calcium hydroxyapatite. Or for example, this one, calcium hydroxyapatite deposition disease. There are problems when you inject calcium. It's not really absorbable. So usually this is asymptomatic, but it can cause many problems. So don't think that some things are just stimulating. They're not causing problems. For example, here, a novel solution, the superficially placed calcium hydroxyapatite in the inferior eyelid. What is this novel? Does it mean that there were old solutions? Yes. In fact, because calcium hydroxyapatite produced many problems and there have been many solutions proposed to these problems. So I think that we have to look, we have to search for a product that induces collagen but doesn't produce so many problems. So, which is the most correct way to inject polylactic now that we know all these many things? So usually they would, uh, they would um, uh, in different books, they would recommend us to inject in bolus, right? But this would be against the reality, against the natural uh, effect of what we produce. So imagine that I'm injecting a certain amount of volume in just one place. That's this upper big balloon here, right? The surface in contact with the dermis is that, right? 4PR cubed uh, one third. If we split that into one third, we multiply the surface in contact by 27. So this means that by just injecting smaller amounts or spreading a product, we will be able to contact the dermis and to stimulate collagen much more efficiently. So it's not about injecting everything in one place. It is about spreading, spreading and making our product interact. It not only affects the volume you are synthesizing, it also affects the number of patients that will have problems if they have. So how is the product prepared? If we want to spread the product, this is how they did it in the past. They mix it with three, four, five milliliters, right? But today, right, because we know that this has a very high incidence in past of 31 to 50% incidence of papules of nodules, right? Today, we dissolve it in a different way. So this is the way I do it. In the level, it says dissolve this in five milliliters of the distant water at least two hours before the treatment. Okay, sometimes patients don't come, or sometimes a patient comes and wants to have a treatment that same day. Uh, if we haven't prepared anything before, what we should do is to prepare something the previous day and to have some bottles ready for injection. This is a video where I explain everything. Because it's in Spanish, I will translate this. So what we do here, we just reduce the, the volume, okay? So we, we, what we used to, right, was, okay, we injected, we, we put in five millimeters of, um, 
of the distal water, and we waited till the following day. But today, what we do is a different thing. We inject the five milliliters, we wait, and the following day, we add some milliliters of uh, anesthesia. Let's say lidocaine 2%, for example. Okay. So let me see if I can run this video a little faster. Right. So I would take the anesthesia like this. All right. Take two milliliters, three, four, five. Perfect. I add the anesthesia, five milliliters, to the five milliliters of distilled water. How much do we have? Well, easy. Five plus five is yeah. 10. All right. So here we have 10 milliliters with a mixture of distilled water, anesthesia. I shake it, I shake it and shake it. And then what I do with this 10 is instead of injecting them directly, I mix it with more sea lime in this way. So in the same syringe, which is 10 ml, I would get three milliliters. One, two, and three. And the rest of the syringe will be filled in with sea lime. This means that I will get a mixture of 10 milliliters, of which the three ml were already inside the vial. It means that I can use one full vial and mix it in a total of 30 milliliters that I can inject anywhere. So what I have here, let me see, let me just um, undergo this again, right? It's adding five milliliter to one vial, then add two milliliters of lidocaine, three, four, five, right? Mix it in a total of five, so we have 10, and then attain four milliliters of three of the mixture. So then we have uh, a total of uh, 30 milliliters. So I have a very, very, very much diluted product. So how much time does the product last once diluted? It can last weeks, months. I've tried in different ways, a week later, a day later, a month later, it doesn't have any effect at all. So why do we have to mix it in distilled water first? rather than sea lab. I don't really have the answer. I just followed the indications, but the problem is that when you inject distal water in the body, it is really, really painful. So that's why I said, well, if the body is 0 0.9, why should I inject something that is zero? Okay, let's mix it, because in the end, my product is going to end up in an environment, which is the skin, uh, where the concentration, the osmolarity is going to be 0 0.9. Okay, if something doesn't, um, uh, if, if, if you don't have any product ready, you can reconstitute it immediately uh, before. That is something that we don't do because we already have products prepared. But if you need to do it, it has been published at least that you can uh, mix polylactic just immediately before the treatment. So, how much do we inject? Okay, this is a patient, right? After one session of one vial of Levinista, I have diluted it in 30 milliliters and I have injected it through a cannula. This is a man uh, aged 53 years old, the same as me today. And this is the same man one year later after five sessions. And we follow the rule of decades. For every 10 years of age, you inject one vial. If you're 43 years old, you inject four vials. If you're 53 years old, you inject five vials. And this is the effect a year later. This is the procedure, all right, and how we do it. Because the idea is not to inject here or there, but spread it all over the skin. We inject a little bit from there, but that's a perfect entry point from the lateral side, the zygomatic arch. And here I go with my cannula. As you see, it is not a very bloody procedure. We can't even see where the blood comes in. So we find our way in, here we are, and we go inside and we start spreading the product as if it was news. This is the good news that it's going to 
to uh, find its root and create new culture. So here we inject it in different directions and spread it all over these areas that we know that find atrophy as they age. The zygomatic area is a crucial area, but also the upper eyelid and the size of the forehead and the temples. So here I go and I turn from one side to another. Sometimes difficult to anesthetize patients completely. And even the cannula sometimes bend from one place to another. But it's not a very long procedure. It takes some minutes and you spread the product everywhere in order to improve the chances of everywhere to, to synthesize new collagen. So what I have used here is one third of my bio. Here I would be using another third of the vial. And finally, in the lower part of the face, I would inject the other third, one sixth on one side, one sixth on the other side. Let me see if I can show to you how I do this around the mouth. And then let's go quickly through the clinical cases. You see how I inject from that point, which is one or two centimeters lateral to the mouth commissure. You can even go underneath the chin. This is a very interesting area. People tend to ask me, how can I remove the fat? And I tend to tell, to say them, it's not about removing, it's about synthesizing more collagen just underneath the face because otherwise this will hang down. From here, we can also treat all the jawline, which always loses collagen and falls down. You see how I'm going just underneath the, the chin. This is very important. You see one side, the other. This is just the effect of uh, the liquid. But once our, um, our lenisna produces new collagen, it will look very nice. So again, lenisna is suspended in five milliliters, you add the light again, and you dilute it. You dilute it. It's not really important whether you put 60, 30, 20, 50, it is about dilution. So this is a patient after one session, this is immediately afterwards. And as you can see, there is no bruising. There is no uh, swelling, product is fantastic, all right? This is another patient immediately afterwards, all right? And here you see a year later after three sessions, and you see this smoothening in all the, the areas of the face because what we are doing is synthesizing collagen everywhere so that everything gets tightened. This is another patient with five sessions. She's 62 years old. Or here you have another patient, 51 years old, immediately after. And this is after two years, the three sessions. And there is a smoothening of all these wrinkles and falls. For example, you have here another patient after five sessions, two years later, there is even um, an improvement in the quality of the skin. And for example, here, two years later, you see the result is amazing, especially around the mouth. Well, for example, here, after four sessions, two years later. The forehead is a very interesting area as well, because there are no treatments for the forehead. It's usually very painful. What do we inject? No one injects anything in the forehead. So uh, this is what we usually do in the forehead. We would uh, find a place up there, right? And from here, we would inject underneath. You can put a little bit of topical anesthesia, or you can inject the anesthesia on top. So it's very important to create long channels with, um, with uh, your deposit, with your uh, dilution of uh, lenisna. And from here, you'll see now, right? You create new volume and you create new bundles of collagen that will bring everything upwards. Because traditionally, nothing is, uh, is, is injected there except some hyaluronic acid. There, there are very few publications about this. So in this technique, right, as we inject, you will see that 
there is um, a, a movement, there is uh, the, the eyebrows will rise up. And you do a massage there. This is the other side. And as you can see here, you put a little bit of, of anesthesia there, right? And from here, right, you would go with your cannula. This is a 25 gauge cannula. And you make this threads, and as you do that, you're going to see that the eyebrow is lifted a little bit because gaining volume in the upper forehead is very, very important. All right, this is an example. 41 years old, four sessions of four vials, and then there's not one vial each time. And uh, the treatment was done in the forehead with this pasta technique and in the face. And these are the result. Amazing. Also in the body, we use the same dilutions in the body. This is a patient after two sessions on one vial. It seems that we don't need as many vials as we do in the face. Right. Here you see another one with an improvement of those uh, wrinkling areas you see here, right? So there's a lot to say about the mechanism of action, but I think that we don't have time for this. But basically what we know today, right, is that we are creating new collagen through the inflammatory response, right? This is all the fibroblasts producing new collagen in green, right? And um, obviously there is a strong synthesis of new collagen, both type one and type three, type three appears at the beginning, type one later on, right? Um, so let me just uh, skip this, okay. Um, right. Um, so in summary, um, polylactic acid and linizna has brought uh, new indications for us uh, because we're treating the buttocks, the body, the chest, the arms, the hands, the forehead, and areas that we would never have imagined. It's not about filling, it's about regeneration. And sometimes we even compare it with a nanofat or with stem cell therapy or with other therapies because it's all about regeneration today. Um, I've almost I haven't detected any nodules or problems for the use of Lenista. I don't know whether it's the dilution that we use, uh, but I'm surprised um, with Hubartic, you found 0.31%. Uh, That's a very, very, very low uh, incidence of adverse effects. And the improvement that you find is very gradual, very natural, and very compatible with the medicine that we want to practice today. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much, Ingo. It was great, great, as usually, great lecture. Uh, there is only one question, uh, as, uh, as I understand, because I don't know Spanish. Uh, is there any upper age limitation about Lenisna? Hmm. Well, um, I haven't mentioned this, but I suspect that the younger you are, the better the response is. This is what I see. So when you do this in, in patients at the age of 70, it is not very effective. And that might be because most um, fibroblasts at that age are collapsed. You're not going to find all that much effect at that time. But obviously, we, we do that there. But probably the perfect age is 40, from 40 to 60. Well, if uh, I just had one, um, one question, and the way to measure the quality of my presentation according to Bartek is by the number of questions. I mean, the less questions, the better your quality. I think that I'm very happy, right? It means that my, my, my lecture was good quality, wasn't it? Yes, of course, it was perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you. Now it's time to present Dr. Suk Bersel from Korea. Oh. Uh, Dr. Uh, started using Juvalugalinista as soon as they were launched. He has tried to use Juvalugalinista for diverse cases with several delivery methods. And recently, he's trying to expand the, the application of Juvaluk to combine it with plastic surgery cases. And Dr. Seo will talk about his ongoing clinical trial regarding the comparison of the capability of collagen generation of various skin boosters. I am personally looking forward to the results. And he will show some cases of unique indications with Juvalukulinista. Dr. Sio, the floor is yours. 
Hello, can you see? Yes, of course. Uh -huh. Okay. Is it working? Yes, of course, we can uh, see everything perfectly. Thank you. Okay. Okay, good. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, please don't go outside. Uh, I will show you the, some, uh, 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 some resolving complication. I will show the secret method today. I will open. Uh, hello, I'm Dr. Uh, Joseph Sokbe -so from So Asung Dermatology Clinic in Seoul, South Korea. I have been working as a dermatologist for 25 years. It is great to see you all. Thank you for having me. Welcome to PDRA lecture. Today, I will talk about ECM regeneration and mesenchymal stem cell differentiation by using Zuberuk and Lenisna. Uh, it is very happy to use this material. It is very popular in Korea. Uh, this is my current career in the dermatology field. It's, uh, I'm a key advising doctor to Bind Global. We already know that PDR comes in two forms in the market. At first time, uh, uh, one product was made but I recommend the two uh, separate uh, uh, size by size. So two product was made. So company make a lot of money. <laughs> and uh, okay, this image show an old scar that was treated with uh, several microliter lenisna. This is the result four weeks after treatment. I see. Uh, a 25 year old appendectomy scar had a significant improve after a single treatment in terms of its volume and color. Uh, working, please. Not working. Uh, this is a recent result. It shows an uh, amazing result after Lenisna micro liter injection. Uh, this is a picture of the same scar three months after treatment and it show marked improvement. We can see amazing result eight months after one treatment. This is the same picture. In order to study the mechanism behind the clinical effects of PDRA, uh, we conducted in, in vitro and in vivo experiment using PDRA and compared it to other collagen stimulators. The experiment was conducted in partnership with the Department of Anatomy and Cell Biology at Gacheon University College of Medicine by Professor Kyung Yi Byun. The company was not involved in the study. It was a double blind study using PDRA and other collagen stimulators. Other collagen stimulators used, used include common substances such as HA filler and etc. Number seven, Juberuk, dilution 4cc. Number eight is Lenisna, dilution 8cc. In part one, I will discuss the result of the in vitro experiment. Uh, in the ex in vitro experiment, human adipose derived mesenchymal stem cells were used. We observed various growth factor and fibroblast precursor after 48 hours. After 72 hours, we observed the papillary dermal fibroblast and retrogradomal fibroblast growth. Uh, 120 microliter each substance were used in 3CC of culture media. In the detection of growth factors, uh, basic fibroblast growth factor had the highest increase for Lenisna according to mRNA level. Other growth factors didn't show prominent difference from stem cells. In terms of growth factor, uh, Lenisna number five, uh, eight uh, had a great uh, and other uh, a few uh, a few other substances show increased uh, TGF one two three. Juberuk 
didn't show TGF expression, perhaps due to the small amount was used in the culture media. For fibrous differentiation from stem cell, number three, number four also showed a positive effect, but Lenisna, number eight, showed an even and significant increase in markers of dermal fibroblast precursor, papillary dermal fibroblast precursor, reticular dermal fibroblast, papillary dermal fibroblast. In summary, Lenishina showed an increase of growth factor and fibroblast growth and differentiation from stem cells. Uh, Jubero didn't have a positive result due to the low concentration used. Uh, we need to control the concentration. In part two, I will discuss the result of animal study. Uh, this part is more important for understanding of tissue regeneration. We injected uh, 100 microliter of substances in five areas in 12 months old mice to compare eight substances. A 12 months old mice is equivalent to a 50 year old person. It is very, very difficult to regenerate the skin. We observed how regeneration occurs and how it is compared in these old mice. We collected the sample eight weeks after intradermal injection. Using same method, we sampled the substance seven and eight, Juberuk and, and Lenisna, on weeks two, four, eight, and 12. Uh, these are the sample two months after injection. Uh, solid substance were observed in number one, two, three, seven, and eight. Number four, five, six had complete dissolution and have no visible substances. But uh, Juberu finally disappeared after 12 weeks. It showed that Juberu can be dissolved more easily than Lenisna. Uh, we look at the basement mem membrane zone on week uh, on the eight week sample using PAS staining. Uh, number seven and eight show increased staining. These findings are very unique, especially after injection of material. Other materials didn't show this effect. When compared to HA injected sample. The difference is more visible. Uh, seven has uh, more staining. Uh, when quantified, number seven and eight had a significant increase compared to others. When observing seven and eight specifically, uh, number eight had increased BMZ PS staining from week four. Uh, at week 12, mice significantly aged and does have decreased staining. This is a graph serial checking pH staining change for number seven and eight. Seven has a strong increase at week eight and number uh, eight has an increase uh, week four and eight. Uh, this is a mass and trichrome stainings. Number two, number five shows slight increase in staining. But the picture shows a marker increase in collagen fiber for number seven. When quantified, number seven has a significant increase in staining more than other substances. When compared to HA injected sample, seven has a great increase in staining as there is a more collagen regeneration. When observed up to week 12, number seven shows an increased staining until eight, but week 12, oh, sorry, uh, standing fade due to the age of the mice. When serial checking with the collagen increase peak at week eight for number seven and is maintained up to week 12. Uh, we also ob observed the change in elastic fiber at uh, eight weeks. Again, Number seven shows an increase in elastic fiber using barrel staining. Uh, elastic fiber is uh, usually difficult to regenerate in old mice. So this finding is very 
unique. When compared to HA injected sample, seven shows a much larger increase in elastic fiber. Computer quantification shows a, shows a significant increase in number seven compared to other substances. Uh, this finding showed a long lasting strong effect of number seven to make elastic fiber. When observing number seven specifically, once again, we see an increase in elastic fiber up to week 12. The serial checking figure show how even in old mice, seven show gradual increase in life fiber growth. This is very, very special findings. In terms of tropoelastin and elastin binding protein, seven show increase in both as well. Uh, we can see from serial checking that tropoelastin and elastic binding protein as a great increase at week four in number seven. This finding that show that number seven is closely connected with elastic fiber reproduction. Uh, this slide uh, a stain to use Horowitz staining to show different types of collagen. All the collagen is shown yellow, type three collagen is blue, and type one collagen is red. Number seven show increase in type one and type three collagen. So a uh, strong pop co purple color is made. When compared to HA injected sample, uh, the, increase in, uh, the increase is more prominent, apparent in blue and red color in seven. Computer quantification shows uh, increase in staining for seven after week eight. Uh, increase in type three collagen, blue is shown in week eight up to week 12 for number seven. Uh, this uh, same result showing an increase up to week eight and 12 for number seven. And MMPs were checked for fiber degradation after week eight weeks, MMP one, two, three were decreased prominently for number seven. Uh, this showed the uh, protection function from fiber degradation of number seven. In terms of fiber degradation change, MMP9 decrease is also observed in number seven. We found something important when serial checking MMPs. When number seven and number eight were looked, uh, look at, looked at over the weeks, number eight, had an increase of MMP1 and 13 during the early weeks. We presume that uh, this is the reason why number eight had less positive effect in animal testing. The, in the experiment, we expect that number eight would show the best effect in terms of regeneration, but the bigger particle could trigger a strong immune response and inhibit regeneration at early stage we can expect that high concentration is not always good for regeneration. So I agree with uh, Dr. Inigo Pilipe. He used a very a thin solu solution. Uh, this is a fast stem cell marker detection findings. Uh, stem cells can induce the secretion of various growth factors and differentiate into the fibroblast to uh, produce ECM. Therefore, we identify the change in expression of fat drive stem cells, CD34, CD44, and CD9, to evaluate the changes in fat drive stem cells at the four weeks of substance injection. CD34, CD44, CD9 are well known fat drive stem cell markers. After injection of number seven, stem cell markers increase significantly, not only in control, but also in comparison with other substances. We assume that this effect can lead to the release of various cytokines and exosomes that are very favorable for skin regeneration. These are fibroblast marker findings. Fibroblast, which produce ECM, is a cell differentiated from stem cell. Stem cells are differentiated into dermal fibroblast precursor, papillary dermal fibroblast precursor, and reticular and hypodermal fibroblast precursor 
and then finally differentiate to the fibroblast. Uh, markers of cells in each stage, such as uh, LIL IG1, BLIMP1, BLK1, FFC1, are well known. After injection of number seven, each stage cell markers increase not only in control, but also in comparison with the other substances. Uh, Papillary dermal fibroblast uh, increased, uh, reduced scar response, and showed the possibility of improving scar texture. In terms of fibroblast differentiation change, Juberuk showed a marked accelerated in differentiation, differentiation step of fibroblast. In terms of change of eight weeks after substance injection, number seven again had the best result as a check by moisturized analyzing machine. Elasticity rate change also show best uh, when comparing seven and eight as a, eight has a constantly increasing moisture change. Uh, similar result can be observed elasticity when seven has a constantly increasing elasticity. Uh, this is a human uh, skin, mass and trichrome staining image before and after PDR injection. Uh, this is a Juberuk. Uh, image B is uh, six months after PDR injection and shows the increase in ECM material compared to image A. Uh, important finding is the increase of ground substance between fibrotic component. This is uh, beneficial for solving whitish fibrotic scars. This is a historic finding after intradermal injection PDRA. Light picture demonstrated increase of elastic fiber at the six months. And in this image, you can see an increase in elastic fiber in the papillary dermis at the six months. Uh, this is a slide of human skin two months after several microliter of Jubero were injected using high speed needless micro injector. The slide shows an overall increase in collagen in papillary dermis and reticular dermis. This shows the upper dermis is a magnified version of previous slide, uh, much increased. Again, this image showed uh, an increase in elastic fiber in the middle and lower dermis two months after two treatment of Jubero. This zoom in of the finding show prominent elastic fiber increase. In summary, uh, hydration, elasticity, basement membrane regeneration, collagen fiber regeneration, fiber degradation inhibition, elastic fiber synthesis activation, papillary derma fibrous increase. Number seven showed the best effect in all aspects, but uh, number eight need a concentration adjustment. Uh, recently, a uh, researcher reported uh, uh, some wonderful results to me. Uh, uh, real fibroblast, uh, no, no, real stem cell regeneration and recruitment, differentiation, proliferation was detected in the tissue level and cell level. Uh, so the new article will be released soon. You can see that. Uh, I will talk about several drug derivative tool. You are familiar with the needle and cannula, so I explain another tool. Uh, automatic multi needle, multi needle RF, needleless injector. And, uh, the, this is automatic uh, multi needle, is used a lot for rejuvenation. In order to inject Jubero very delicately and densely, you can use uh, an automatic injector. Uh, this is adjust to shallow depths, which cause less pain for uh, uh, peri peri -ora, peri orbital area. Please use a very, very, very small amount and a very thin need, nil, needle is needed. I frequently use this technique of high LED uh, Now I will show, I will introduce to Mirajet. This is a device, a system that expel drug high speed, high pressure, can be uh, used for scar treatment, skin rejuvenation uh, with Juberug or Lenisna. Uh, this video shows the treatment method of PDRA delivery using Mirajet. Mirajet effectively and rapidly deliver PDRA, Lenisna, and Juberuk. Uh, Mirajet, this uh, is a uh, soft technique. Without bleeding, we can deliver a PDRA particle very delicately. I, I frequently use this method uh, all day long. Uh, this is device, apply strong positive pressure, apply 
a pressure after needle is removed is a good technique for acne scar, scar treatment. Uh, this is a very, it's the most commonly used method for drug and energy delivery when I treat acne scars. Uh, stacking is very important. Uh, I recently developed pumping tip uh, to increase the sharpness and thickness of needle. So this tip further Im improve the delivery of drugs. A new pumping tip is designed to increase air pocket and be used not only monopolar, but also in bipolar mode, uh, increase the therapeutic effect. PDRA are injected directly into the scar to induce ECM and pumping tip makes the drug delivery and thermal coagulation. I frequently combine this technique, injection first and then drug delivery at the same time. Uh, this finding is very important. In addition, PDRA can be applied clinically in various ways using this property because glass transition temperature drop to 40 degree from 50 degree Celsius after hydration. This finding is very important. Uh, Juberu granicina molecular weight is uh, 136, this area. So we can soften and spread well and promote particle breakdown by increasing tissue temperature. This is approachable temperature. This is a final slide. Uh, on informed beginner doctor accidentally inject a high concentration lenicina into the intradermal layer. How can you handle? How can you handle? How about? Dr. Dr. Bartek, could you yes. some yes yes uh, yeah, some well, uh, reply? I use uh, I use also I haven't mentioned this in uh, my presentation, but I also use the uh, radio frequency micro needle. I've got Morpheus eight from Israel yeah. from uh, mode, um, but usually I start with injections uh, to because those nodules are usually just the high concentration deposits of polylactic acid. And if you inject even normal saline, mm. you can distribute evenly, more evenly uh, the substance. So you can uh, decrease those nodules without no harm using only normal saline. But of course, radio frequency micro lending is very um, effective. Yeah, yeah, yes. 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 right. And uh, I will show the answer. And this is one-time treatment. Needle RF and RF for thermal heating, 40 degrees Celsius. But important finding is uh, important technique is a strong compression after heating. Simple heating can control the nodule. Do you understand? Mm, because yeah, uh, this, uh, 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 after heating, this material is the uh, glass transition temperature is a uh, 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 change no, to plus. very low. You can message low. it. And yeah, evenly strong message, it strong compression. Not, not only con heating, but also a message is very important in this case. Yeah, it but the heating is also important. At first time, you yeah. use the heating to lower the and glass the glass compression. Melt it slightly. Yeah. Okay, to make yeah. it more plastic. Yeah, okay. because uh, already hydrated, already deeply hydrated. So glass transition temperature is changed to very low. Level. Degrees uh, yeah. from 52, as far as I remember, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That that you can control every complication very easily, but yes. this uh, this changing of uh, compression does not uh, solve the properties uh, of the completely dis disappearing. Yeah. There's some. It's incredible. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great information. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's the my uh, finishing. I thank you for all uh, attention and thank you very much. And, uh, Sir, I didn't check. I, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't uh, check. There the is one, one very interesting question. Um, how did you quantify the degree of staining for, for example, elastic fibers? Is there any image analysis? Uh, if so, what uh, software did you use? Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This uh, procedure was the was the done by university. So okay. special program was uh, a regional special program was used and. Uh, they didn't involve the, in the some uh, uh, benefit. So 
okay. they are yeah they are uh, regionally digital, uh, calibrated digital, uh, digital image digital image okay. some okay. block was uh, 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 choice and uh, the finally analyzed by computer by computer okay thank yeah. you very much it was a really great amount of uh, new knowledge very yeah. i'm yeah. very impressed thank you very yeah. much yeah 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 and uh, uh, yeah. this is a very platform. basic Basic, basic uh, very, uh, very also very uh, uh, positive information is that there is a straight connection between uh, those observations we have that this yeah, digital right. look is very effective in clinical yeah. Uh, yeah. everyday practice yeah. and those your findings are really perfect because they match completely yeah, and right. they uh, convince us to to use digital uh, because i think also that this is one of the best products in the world right now yeah right it's a Actually, is a PDRA, especially Jubel is not a simple collagen stimulator. That is no, a, no, no. Yes, yeah, it's, it's a more, cell stim stimulator. Effect. Yeah, mm. uh, yes. you can uh, see the uh, uh, new article soon. It would be a pleasure to read it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Hello world again. This is the end of our lectures. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that it was an unforgettable experience uh, to listen to all those magnificent lectures today. Really, thank you all of you uh, for great speeches. It was a great pleasure to, to, to listen to all this amount of knowledge from all over the world. Great thanks to the audience. Thank you, uh, your dear colleagues from all over the world for your presence and for interesting uh, questions to all our lectures. I hope all of you benefited from this conference and get inspiration to develop your everyday practice. And I'm also convinced that those lectures dispelled any doubts, any doubts and convince you all about the safety. It's the most important thing I think in our everyday clinical practice to do the safety procedures uh, and the effectiveness of polydialectic acid products Lanista, and especially my beloved one Juvaluk. So thank you every lecturers again. Thank you, Beauty Europe. Thank you, Vime Global, for Julia 2022. Mm -hmm. And I think that we see soon on second Juvaluk and Lunista International I, Academy. I, I, in Korea, we will. Uh, uh, there are so many experts, so they are waiting. <laughs> they are about to ex uh, share the experience. And there is also an uh, interesting question when using needless injector, do we lose some of the medicine? Yeah, right, right, right. Yes, uh, but so, so yeah, yeah so, uh, direct ingestion is also important, but it's the separation function is also combined. So yes. if, if you use lenicina in the directly injected in some area, it, especially the dermal area, you must uh, separate it. So this needle yes. is needed, needling is needed. And uh, yes, but yes, first needle and then yeah. needless injector. Yeah. to both of them all together yeah. mm. okay so i think that uh we are done thank you yeah, very done. much uh, thank you very much thank you have a wonderful weekend yes have a nice weekend to all of you yeah someday i want to meet you <laughs> <laughs> see you thank you thank you Chou Sun Sim, Bye. Sukumanisha Sale. Yes, Sukumanisha Sale. And Chai Sukumanisha Sale. Yeah.